In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at sorting algorithms, and we're going to look particularly at the selection sort, and how do we apply it to a data structure like an array, for example. So in this lesson, we'll talk about how does it work, and then we will look at the pseudocode of the selection sort algorithm, and then we'll apply it to a Delphi example. And then right to the end of the video, we'll look at some modifications or variations that we can do to our selection sort for different situations. So over here, we've got an array of six elements that contain integers. They are the numbers, as you can see, they are not in the correct order. So we are now going to apply the selection sort to this array so that we can sort it from smallest to biggest. And the way it basically works, if I can give you the crux of it, is that it takes the first element in the array and makes sure that it's in the correct position. So it makes sure that the value in position one of the array is the smallest value. And then after that, we can then sort the rest of the array using the same logic, the same algorithm. And we do this by comparing two elements. And if the element that we're looking for is is bigger, then we do a swap. So let's, let's see how it works. So let's have a look at position one and position two. 45 is not bigger than 65. So in this case, when it's not bigger, we don't do anything. We just leave it alone. So we are not going to do anything. So now I'm going to compare one and three. In this case, 45 is bigger than 32. So therefore, they are in the wrong order. So therefore, we are going to swap them. I'm going to put the value that's in position 1 in position 3 and the value that's in position 3 into position 1. So we swap them. I then compare the new position 1 with position 4. And 32 is still smaller than 96. And if I compare it with 55, it's smaller than that. And if I compare it with 86, it's still smaller. So once I've gone right through to the end, you'll notice that position 1 has the correct value in that element of the array. That is sorted, basically, in position 1. The rest of the array, not so much. So now we're going to apply this algorithm again, except for we don't need to do it to position 1 because we know that position 1 is sorted. So we are now going to go from position 2 to 6. So if I do this again, we're going to compare uh, position 2 and 3. As you can see, 65 is bigger than 45, so in this case we must swap it. Now I'm going to compare the new position 2 to position 4, and there's nothing wrong over there, so we don't do anything. Position 2 and 5, there's nothing wrong. And position 2 and 6, there's nothing wrong. So now that we've done it a second time, you'll notice that position 1 and 2 are sorted, but the rest of the array, not so much. And so we're going to keep on going like this, taking the first element of what we've got to um, still got to sort and see if we can get that one in the correct position. So we've done number 1 and number 2. Let's now work with position number 3. So if I compare 3 and 4, we can see that 65 is less than 96, so therefore we don't do anything over here. But when I compare 3 and 5, 65 is greater than 55, so we must do a swap over here. And then we do 3 and 6, and there you can see nothing needs to be swapped over there. Let's do it one more time over here. Position 4, let's see where we can if that's in the correct position. 4 and 5, no. 44, 96 is bigger than 65, so we must do a swap over here. And then number 4 and number 6, 65 and 87, no, those are OK. And we'll have to do it one more time. So here we go. So we're comparing number 5 with number 6. There we can see they're in the wrong order, so we swap them, and that's it. I don't need to do it for the last element in the array, because obviously once I get to the last element of the array, if everything before it has been sorted, then obviously the last element will also be sorted. And as you can see, we now have a sorted array. We started off with sorting position 1, and then we sorted position 2, and we slowly but surely sorted the array from position 1 right through to the end of the array. So let's look at the pseudocode for this algorithm. So basically, we've got two for loops that work together. The first for loop will go from 1 till the size of the array minus 1. Remember, we didn't do any sort of check with position 6 at the end there, because once we had sorted the entire array from 1 to 5, we knew that position 6 would be sorted already. So that's why we go from 1 to the size of the array minus 1.
and then the loop inside that that is the loop that's going to go through the entire array and check its position so we always start from the start of the previous loop so we start from position r to the size of the array so if you remember correctly when we checked position one we were looping from one up until the end of the array. Actually, we didn't go from one. We get one after that one. We started from position two. So we checked one with two till the end of the array. And then when we did position two in the array, we didn't start with one. We started with position three till the end of the array. We compared position two with three till the end of the array. So it's always the previous loop's value plus one to the size of the array. And once you've got those two loops, then all you have to do is compare if the item, the first one that you're comparing, if it's bigger than the other item, then obviously they're in the incorrect order. If the item from the first loop is bigger than the item from the second loop, then they are in the incorrect order. And then we must do some sort of swap algorithm to swap the two values around. Now, it can be quite complicated, but this pseudocode is actually the easier one to remember it's the shorter code if you compare it to other s sorting algorithms like a bubble sort so this is quite a nice one to remember if you can remember it quite parrot fashion so all you basically need to do is to take this logic and apply it to Delphi so let's have a look at some Delphi code over here uh, I've got my loop from 1 to R size I'm assuming that R size is the size of the array minus 1 then we've got our second loop that goes from 1 to size. Actually, it should go from R plus 1 to size. That's what we should have over there. And then here is our checking to see if the value is in the correct order. And then here is our swap to make sure that we swap the values if we find one that is bigger than the other. In other words, if we find it in the incorrect order so that we can put it in the correct order. Now let's look at this in an example in Delphi. Over here we've got a program, if I can just show you what the program looks like. Simply we're going to display the array and then it's going to obviously be unsorted when we display it. And then we'll sort the array and then display it again to see if it has been sorted. Here is the code for this button that we're going to sort the array. So there you can see our first loop. Obviously this, this is an array called array numbers that stores n number of elements. So we go from n minus 1, from 1 to n minus 1. So we go to the one just before the end of the array. And then the second loop goes from the position after whichever one we're looking at. So if we're looking at position 1, we're looking at all the values from 2 till the end of the array. If I was looking at the position 3 in the array, I would be looking at all those from position 4 till the end of the array, comparing that 3 with those positions. And here is where I check that the value that we're checking with is if it's bigger than the value that we're looping through then obviously that means they're in the incorrect order and we do a swap this is a typical swap algorithm you cannot just go array numbers j equals array numbers r and then array numbers i equals to array numbers j because then you would lose some data you need some temporary value to store um, one of the values until you've done the the complete swap and then we just give some feedback in some message DLG to say that it has been sorted. So there we go. There's our array. Remember to use begin and ends when you're doing multiple things with an if statement. And let's have a look to see what or if it works. So we're going to run our program. So there it is. It's running. We will display our array. And there you can see all the elements in our array. You can see they are unsorted. I will sort the array. It tells me that it's sorted. If I display it again. There you can see it has worked. The values in the array are now in numerical order. Some little things to take note of if you want to modify this um, example. For example, you could use this code for any sort of array, for example. Your only difference for different arrays would obviously be, the main differences would be the name of the array. You would have to use that. And also what stores the value for the number of elements in the array. Secondly, if this obviously does a um, ascending order, so from smallest to biggest, if you want it the other way around in descending order, the only thing you need to do is to swap that sign around. That's the only thing you need to do to change the order of this array. So let's actually have a look here to see if it works. So if I change that sign to a less than sign and I'll run my program, 
There we go. You can see they are unsorted. If I sort it, it tells me it's sorted. If I display it, now you can see they are in descending order. And then also, a thing to take note of, this obviously is an array of integers. This would also work for an array of any t other type of variable like reals or strings. The only thing to be aware of, because we are doing a swap with a temporary variable, that temp variable must be of the same type of what's inside that array. In this case, it's an integer. If it was an array of strings, you would have to make temp a string. I hope this video has been informative, and I hope that you can learn how to do a sort in your array. For more videos on arrays and other Delphi issues that you can do for the grade 10, 11, or 12 CAP syllabus for information technology in South Africa, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, leave comments. We would love to hear from you. And also follow our Twitter account so that you can keep up to date whenever we load, upload new videos.